Hi folks, good morning. I know we're not going to, to meet today, but after last night's cabinet meeting, there's some very important announcement we have. We'll stand back for you shortly. When we get the usual GBC feed, then we'll go. I know we're not scheduled to have a press briefing this morning, but as I'm sure we're yesterday being a Thursday, the Cabinet of the Republic sat under the chief of his president and took a number of decisions, one of which is uh, pretty critical and I expected to update the nation on that particular decision that was made. And it has to do with the addition of some category of persons back in the Ghanaian jurisdiction at this time our borders remain closed. Do you recall that as part of our COVID-19 response program, Ghana has closed its borders to human traffic to tail the risk of importation of positive cases. During the same period, you would recall that we have asked the missions to gather data on who is out there, what are their conditions, who are those who have interest in coming back to Ghana, what are the possible ways that can be safely managed. Um, now, a specific decision has been made and I'm um, under instructions to announce that to you this morning. The government of Kuwait has informed the government of Ghana of an intention to deport some 245 Ghanaians who are currently in Kuwait illegally. The government of Kuwait has further requested permission from the government of Ghana to bring these persons into the Ghanaian jurisdiction on Saturday the 30th of May 2020. The government of Ghana has subsequently granted a special permit to charter flight. Ghana's borders remain closed to human travel as part of the international travel restrictions under Ghana's COVID-19 response program. As you would recall, the restrictions are to limit the importation of cases into Ghana. However, even after these restrictions were imposed, we have granted special exemptions for some countries to evacuate their citizens from our jurisdiction. The government of Ghana, in line with some of the exemptions granted earlier, hereby announces the following measures to safely admit the 245 deportees from Kuwait into Ghana while ensuring that the risk to the COVID-19 response program is mitigated. Number one, the deportees will be mandatorily quarantined tested for COVID-19 immediately upon arrival in Togo. Number two, deportees who test positive will be given the necessary supportive treatment. Deportees who test negative will remain in quarantine for a second test at the end of a 40-day quarantine period. In addition to the aforementioned COVID-19 measures, please take that the deportees will generally be received and handled in line with the immigration regulations for all deportees, i.e., they will be in the custody of the state for preliminary investigations on the circumstances of their illegal stay in Kuwait. It is upon the completion of these investigations that a case-by-case -case determination will be made on the status and further handling of each deportee 
in accordance with Ghana's laws. The cost of quarantine and treatment is to be borne by the government of Ghana. The National Security Secretariat has been instructed to work in collaboration with the military, the immigration, and the police to take responsibility for ensuring that the mandatory quarantine is adequately enforced. The Ghana Health Service is asked to take responsibility for the testing and, if be, treatment of these deportees. The general public is hereby assured that all measures to ensure the health of the general population and to ensure that the gains of the COVID-19 response program are held are being undertaken, even at this time, by the government of Ghana. I will do a quick translation to Chi, and then I will take your questions. Um, Senia, Yenimuno, Sabri, Yebodes, Yenarano, Yatutum. Abri, Asono, Abain, and the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, so, ama am a no more woman on it, be brie, eh, you know, more than Como, eh, and I want him for Juan a pepper, eh, and car obeb Ghana, or peppers or beba and can hunt some sis, and they're data gathering. Some moon crack, eh, be a barber from Tinta Internet, so I hear a lot of data gathering. A moment, no cabinet meeting, a sem potting bar could be a, um, a buying. EDC ni puma si breno, enu na mi mampeni si ye mohu de runche mu. Kuwait abayin, ama ya swa se, gana fwo a he nu, edu yayin e numbiya, e wo Kuwait a omu ni nkrata anu. Sabi, omu ni omu yuye, nshisha ya omu ye wohu ni nara, sabi risu a ye kwa obin yeti ya COVID-19, omu be pese, omu de, omu ebe ma gana abayin. Omu asana ko swa se, omu pe permission, na o ma chartered flight e de wo aba Ghana sa request we aba emrea na nka ya to your borders mu as part of sa covid 19 response program mu borders no ya to mu se nipa nka san to me nko ma no ya ma exemptions kakra ye nua no bi efia ma no ne ana e wa se na o mo aman e ye so mbe pese o mo so be chartered flight abe for ko no ya ma permission ma bibri chartered flight abe for ma ko sa exemption ni mu ana ye hwe Na a buying CH na SA, ye ma permission, se kuwait a buying it to me the chartered flight na Ghana for 245 ewono, omu to me the warm eba Ghana, umba be do miminda a ye ochina. Umba be do miminda and yochina, this is a May 30th. Miminda me tete, just to be clear. Na enseya e wo huni. Edi kain. Ombe du gana hase ya. De friend de tri quarantine. Ye, ye mom yina bom hoja wo bebi ya uh, asra fwone, police fwone, doctor fwone ya de wo hwa yetu miya shwa omu suno. Ye be mandatorily quarantine wo nomu na ya testi wo mu. Se COVID-19 be ya yedu hun komwe se ebi wo biya. One ma omu wubi ni yi omu ako isolation and treatment center senia and na no ye no no. One ma ebe testi negative no. Ebe sa yamu oho for 14 days ni na niya sa testi omu bi omu. E me kishu osi. Nye se ebi ya ubiye nye bi nened. But ya e testi mi ni na. One ma sa yamu se mu wifo omu hono. E kanya bayi emu ubi asu te se omu ba as deportees. Inti mra immigration mra efa deportees baga na seni ya home na saa mra nana ya debe ye juma. Chiresi omu bewo abayi kukumu anasa omu bewo abayi akache. Na abayi ya mfifimu ubiya hasem kwa ya efa so oye illegal grant obebiya. Na owa anasa ubiya uni nkata obebiya no wano. Na omu ye mfifimu nubi ya diye wose mra kwa so omu fa eye no omu kwe afa aye. Abayi nebe fa emu quarantine any treatment no e hoka na um abain ama instructions to national security secretariat say we no military police ni immigration and we say mandatory quarantine no be no be ko ni kwan e be faso ahro mso ni adina senia omudi kan ye na ne sebe ya kwadre wan e faso ye ni mu no omo hwe no mo ye no 
Ghana Health Service, so I my instructions say, one more entry na testing. Na so we should hear treatment, uh, treatment on the man. No, my friend, my buying a book or mining na the rule say, what's here? Yeah, if I say, Sani pa, I had no edia name, no me, a quit a buying a fine warm, a few hole, edia bay. There was here, yeah, if I say, Uncle Fansun, son, so Bonnie be a mre. Ghana minus a poor modern sabre a year quantity COVID 19. Nay, there was a red a year na um, a nim quire con cacanca crow or quire quire COVID 19. No, I'm touching man, a bamba hena ya ye nina. Um, this is the end of this brief, and I will take your questions on this brief uh, shortly. Just one moment. So, if you have questions, let me ask our colleagues to set up the microphone so that we can take questions. Um, yeah, so we will take the first two. Okay. Are you observing social distancing? This is like one and a half meters. You have to spread a bit more. <laughs> yes, madam, let's go. Okay, so uh, my name is Sarah Paku, representing Media General. I want to find out the category of these persons that are coming, how many males or females, the age bracket. I also like to find out the period in which they stayed in Kuwait illegally. Uh, before this deportation. Thank you. Thank you. Could you? I'm Kujuman with City News. I also want to find out that um, there are several or many Ghanaians in other countries who would want to come home on their own. Are there any arrangements for such people who want to come back since we are allowing these deportees in? Thank you. If there's another batch of questions, let me take the next two. Good morning, Honorable. Morning, I Honorable, you friend I have a question. I have a question. I have a question. I have a question. I have a I have a question. I have a question. I have a I have a question. I have a question. I have a question. I have a question. I my name is Mark Joy. My question is tied to answer this question. Um, you mentioned data gathering. I want to find out what the um, data is pointing to, and then um, are we likely to have the evacuation of our computers who are stranded outside Ghana? Thank you. The last part again. Are we likely to have the evacuation of our computers who are stranded outside Ghana? Okay. If there's another batch of questions, I'll take them before I start responding. Um, so, Sarah, what we'll do is that we'll compile the, the initial uh, manifest as we hit, and we will share with you. The number we have now is 25. So we'll compile that initial manifest and break it down into the categories that you are looking for, how long people have stayed there, the gender split, um, et cetera. Um, and then we'll share it uh, with you colleagues in the media, hopefully before that flight touches down. Uh, Kujwajima is asking whether there are any arrangements for others. I've mentioned that there are, or, or there's been a lot of data gathering. Let me just try a quick summary of the various categories. There are those who show clearly that they are able to pay for a potential evacuation to Ghana. This is made up of private individuals, business people, uh, private, sponsors, private sponsored students on exchange programs. Then you have government sponsored students who are yet to complete their courses, but without any compelling reasons, uh, they want to come home. Then foreign sponsored um, 
No, the next one is the uh, uh, Ghanaians who, uh, who hold resident permits. Then you have those who are uh, government officials who traveled for official business, government sponsored students, some of who have completed their course, some who have a long break and an unclear break. Then you have those who are uh, living rough, those who traveled by personal circumstances have been worse because of the COVID-19 response program globally, um, et cetera, and in various categories. A lot of data has been gathered. What we are going to do is to treat it on a case-by-case basis. So you would find out that in this particular instance, the examination is on the fact that these are persons illegal staying in Kuwait. The Kuwaiti government has literally, as part of their response program, rounded them up um, and has processed them and it's, and it's of the view that they want to deport them and gone through the diplomatic uh, conversations with the government of Ghana. And therefore, on that uh, diplomatic level, the government of Ghana engaging with the government of Kuwait are able to make a decision that for this category, we are able to receive and contain them uh, and test and ensure that they don't become a risk to the general population. All the other categories, as I mentioned, will also be examined on a case-by-case -case basis. And where the examination shows clearly that it is possible to handle it in a manner that does not pose a risk, to the general population, I'm sure uh, the decisions that are made thereon, as we are doing this morning, even at this short note, to be communicated uh, to us. So as of now, no firm decision has been made um, in a blanket manner. It's been handled on a case-by-case -case basis. And so the cohorts that we are able to take a decision on now are the uh, potential DPs from Kuwait. These are persons who uh, we're going to be staying illegally in Kuwait. The Kuwaiti government has uh, gone through their processes and has satisfied the government of Ghana that these are Ghanaian citizens uh, who are illegally staying in Kuwait. And the government of Ghana has given uh, that uh, permission, that special permit that that aircraft containing them can land. I'm trying to confirm the date. It is actually tomorrow. It is tomorrow, not the 30th. So colleagues, just help me to correct that in your reportage. It is tomorrow. It is tomorrow that uh, they, they will be uh, get to Ghana. So they will be leaving Kuwait uh, tonight and then they will be getting to Ghana uh, tomorrow. And we have triggered the process to ensure that we can receive them, we can mandatory quarantine and test and ensure that they don't become a threat uh, to the Ghanaian population if indeed we have uh, some cases in there. And all of this is at the cost, the uh, travel is at the cost of the Kuwaiti uh, government as well. So for the other categories, could you? The decision will be made on case by case basis, having examined the circumstance and how it can be contained. Um, Abednego asked a question in Chi. Can I give an update on the data has been gathered so far? The numbers are in the thousands uh, from all over the world, from the Americas, from Europe, from uh, even West Africa uh, and parts of Asia. The numbers are in the thousands. Uh, as in the numbers of persons who have given us information about their status. I hope you understand me. I'm not saying that thousands of people want to come back. I just be very clear on that. The numbers of people who have provided us information about their status are in the thousands. If you look at the various data sets uh, in, 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 in West Africa alone or even across Africa, you have Niger, Cameroon, Gabon, Cote d'Ivoire, South Africa, Nigeria, Benin, um, in the Americas, you have a tall list. In Europe, you have another tall list. So the numbers of Ghanaians who are giving us information are in their thousands. But they are being examined um, on a cohort by cohort basis or a case by case basis so that a good decision is made without putting the general population and the gains of COVID 19 response program so far at risk. Uh, Womo ama yati omo kanu eh eh apimni echiri em esbe bia bibri wo ene sun dia e de bibri kodu ho ene omo tibia sabri ni nyina na ban e koswa hwe no obi ane na sem obi ane na sem e hwe asem no se ne ete na ya de a ye betumi aye hu bibi se ne ne sa ni part 245 ahe nu e dia nan num ya Ye who be be a ye no, um, ye be who be be. 
and see ye share a seven or any idea and answer or mind be an idea send yet no and the ever cost washer and a sir but sabri the nipa or mama at home and canoe am any um a tree and there's a question about are we likely to have an evacuation of Ghanaians. Uh, some may even describe what is happening even though it's a deportation some may even describe it as some sort of evacuation and actually what we think as i mentioned is that we are examining on a cohort by cohort basis maybe let me not say case by case because case by case may sound like individuals so we're examining on a cohort by cohort basis um what the situation is and what the feasibilities are for example in this particular case 245 persons from kuwait illegal immigrants the Kuwaiti government has completed its work, satisfied us through the diplomatic channels, uh, seeks to deport them. The government of Ghana believes that we're able to receive and contain these persons uh, and the risk associated with it. In line with the um, immigration regulations for handling of deportees and our COVID-19 response program, we believe we're able to do it, and that is why that permission has been granted. Other cohorts from uh, other parts of Africa, other parts of Europe, other parts of the Americas, will also be examined on a case by case basis and the appropriate determination made. Colleagues, if there's another batch of questions, I'll take it. Yes, I've been Governments of Ghana have verified the identities of these uh, so-called illegal migrants and person with deport on but it is a bit is only a US government here government say um, 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 checks, HSA, they are not Ghanaians in the to me and deport on and only example and cap me by the man now I'm correct to be US government then Yanka said they are not Ghanaians near say I'm um, satisfied and say I'm um, not Ghanaians yeah. in this case you know say I'm going to go through diplomatic channels you know I satisfy and say we know me enough. Answer now, you be deported, you know. Say or my no, our person a deportation. If you manage to cast away your free Ghana, your man go for free Ghana embassy. Any one who could din come, who could come here, say no cry, no no cry. Or who could validate. Only foreign service says no be over. It will be crying for. It will be in talk between the people. Person a deport. Any Ghana foreign service officer now will be say obe obe valid because will be all crying for. Person will be free come home. To who say who are Obabe valid? Obabe Boama, he be in a fi ho. But I'm going through that process now and say I'm satisfied. I'm saying every 245, and I'm satisfied. I'm saying we may again have four. A bank susu say say ye jo ma ye be to me a container and ye be to me so ano. Ora we we the follow up with it. 245. I'm going to say every for instance Obi Obi and Obi Nibi to tell me in area. Is there any plan? Economic uh, situation, any package we are more because the yeah, deportee immigrants are more support government or support to be a or the boss out for you. Is um, there any in place? Uh? Brief, I'm um, one idea and can be be um, for uh, Sasa Musabri. Um, good morning, on our, good morning. On our staff. And, um, first of all, I want to know when the briefings began with the Kuwaiti government over the deportation of 245 Ghanaians. I ask this because. There are other Ghanaians who are willing to cater for their own flights back to the country. And so if the, when did the deliberations begin for these 245 people to come in? And then uh, I also know what about other Ghanaians who are in other Emirati kingdoms? Does government have a plan for such persons in other Emirati kingdoms as well? Thank you very much. Uh, I do know that the deliberation has gone on for some weeks now. Um, and the government of Ghana has been engaged by the government of Kuwait. And the government of Ghana has been satisfied by the diplomatic requirements that have been fulfilled currently by the government of uh, Kuwait. I have said also that, perhaps I must even start by saying that our heart goes out to all our compatriots out there uh, who, for one reason or the other, because of the closure of the borders, are not able to ordinarily move into the Ghanaian jurisdiction. Our heart goes out to them. Indeed, if you to the foreign ministry, there have been times when they've had to intervene and buy accommodation for some of these persons, some of who were sleeping rough at a point in front of embassies and uh, other places. They've had to do some work to ensure that some of our compatriots are given some minimum support uh, where they are. 
but on a cohort by cohort basis we continue to examine and this is why it was important to gather data earlier and that data that has been gathered is being analyzed that analysis helps to understand the circumstances the possibilities feasibilities even of uh, containing some, some particular cohort if you do uh, allow them to come into the Ghanaian jurisdiction. So a heart goes out to them. Um, it is a matter of concern to the president and the government. That is why we've tried to get data and use that data to make a decision. One of the simplest cohorts we are able to deal with at this point in time is this 25. Uh, how to, uh, um, because of their states as illegal immigrants and the fact that they are being deported, how to simply grant permission, receive them, make sure they are mandatorily quarantined, tested, uh, kept even for the 14 days for those who are negative, so that they can be, for one better expression, evacuated. And I'm using this expression advisedly. Please don't say we have started full evacuation. This is a deportation, and we have given permission for that chartered flight to come. But I'm using the expression um, evacuated advisedly. So that you can receive them and ensure uh, the gains we've made and the general population are not put at risk. But the rest of the data set is also being examined on cohort by cohort basis to determine the feasibilities um, of the situation. Ah, yeah. I have a question regarding um, the, our border situation. So, on a daily basis, we get reports. Ghanaians aiding other West African nationals into the country. Um, what are we doing to ensure that stiffer measures are handed out to these people who aid foreign nationals and also to empower the immigrant officials at our borders? So the first thing you should notice is that the reason for which on a daily basis we hear 40 people arrested here, 60 people arrested here, 80 people arrested here, the reason for which you hear that is because the Ghana Immigration Service and the Ghana Armed Forces have significantly set up um, the, the, the fortification of our borders, both on the legal entry points and what is known to be some of the illegal crossing points. The Ghana Immigration Service has on its own put up about 700 men and women to augment their already existing numbers. The Ghana Armed Forces, through Operation Conquered Fist, is supporting that exercise. That is why they are able to get the intelligence and make these arrests on a regular basis, which you are colleagues in very well by reporting. And then we get the sense, particularly of some of our own uh, citizens who aid and abet uh, these persons who want to come into the jurisdiction illegally. That's the first one. The second one is that, yes, um, there ought to be some sanctions. And in instructions have been given that uh, sanctions must apply particularly to Ghanaians who are in the business of aiding and abetting people uh, without authority to uh, cross now that our borders are closed. The little nuance in that is that as part of the COVID-19 response program, you would notice that arrests, keeping people in custody and related matters are very sensitive and therefore are not handled with the normal dispatch and may I say even action that you see. Indeed, we had one incident here in Accra where persons arrested, put in police custody, later tested positive, police persons associated, you have to go along with it. So now, even for the police and the prison service, they have a protocol that when people are, for example, sentenced or people have to be put in custody, they are not commingled with the general population. And so that affects how clearly you can see some of these things in terms of the sanctions side also happening. But um, those sanctions must happen. I do know that instructions have been given that we should find a way of getting sanctions applied quickly and announced so that it serves as a deterrent to um, other persons. Have I answered all your questions? Okay. Please, this was a quick brief on a specific matter. Just to be clear, it is tomorrow tomorrow not 30th tomorrow that the flights come in um and it is a charter flight from kuwait a request from the kuwaiti government to deport 245 illegal immigrants the government of ghana as part of the actions even under this closure of the borders has acquiesced to that request but has put in place a mechanism to ensure that we can admit quarantine test 
uh, and treat them uh, under the immigration uh, protocols for receiving um, deportees. I want us to be clear that we don't report that our borders are opened or that we have started evacuation of persons. It's a specific, uh, may I say, cohort that we have worked with. For the other cohorts, for all of the thousands of people who have given us information, it is being examined on a cohort by cohort basis and when a decision made, I will do well to share it with you. Okay? So thank you very much uh, for your attention.